It's nine o'clock in the morning. We're in Asakusa, the most busiest place in Tokyo, and we're about to begin a 20 kilometer walk across the world's biggest city. Let's go. How much of Tokyo can you see in a single day on foot? We're about to find out. Over 37 million people call the Greater Tokyo Area home. It's an overwhelming megacity packed with unique districts, hidden streets, and mouthwatering theme. Today, our 20 kilometer journey will take us the length of the Ginza Line that starts east in the traditional district of Asakusa and runs all the way to Shibuya in the west side of the city amidst the chaos of the world's busiest crossing. Along the way, we'll encounter the bustling Amiyoko market in Ueno, get lost in a video game store in Akihabara and grab a drink in the gritty neon lit alleyways of Shinbashi. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll get to know your way around the city and discover what makes Tokyo such an exciting and rewarding place to explore. I love walking across Tokyo, but I don't want to do it alone. It's a bit lonely, isn't it? I wanted to bring a friend. I wanted to bring a bodyguard. And most importantly of all, I needed someone to carry my bags. It's my third best American friend, Pete Premier 2. How you doing, Pete? God, this backpack is heavy. And I want to get something clear here. You're telling me that you took Connor to Hokkaido, Joey to the beautiful island of Okinawa, and I get to be your pack mule as we walk 500 kilometers across rainy Tokyo. You're so much more than just a pack mule. Yeah? Yeah, you're a stylish pack mule. Look at that hat. Thanks, Cracking. buddy. All right. Asakuso is undeniably Tokyo's biggest tourist hotspot, and it's not hard to see why amidst the charming side streets filled with traditional architecture leading up to the imposing Sensoji Temple, the oldest temple in all of Tokyo dating back to the 7th century. Some call the neighborhood a tourist trap, but despite the crowds, you're never far away from a quiet corner where you can pause for a moment and admire the sheer beauty of the temple and the neighboring five-story pagoda towering overhead. And honestly, to experience that moment alone, I think Asakusa is definitely worth a visit. At this, this is Asakusa, and uh, it's probably the busiest place in Tokyo. Right now, on a Saturday, don't know why we've come here. All journeys start with a single step, and we chose the busiest. <laughs> the busiest step. So, you know, people often say the videos are scripted, right? Yeah. This one's not scripted, and you're gonna, you're gonna see that very quickly. There's no plan today. We know where we're starting, we know where we finish. That's it. We don't know what happens in between. I find it hard to believe that anyone would think that what we do is scripted, because I can barely string together a sentence. That's very true. <laughs> Well, here we go. This is the most famous street that I can remember leading up to like the biggest temple in Japan. I don't know if it's actually like the biggest size, but Sensoji on New Year's, forget about it. Five, six hour wait. Sensoji. Oh, you nearly trod on that bird. I'm so sorry. What the fuck? He nearly killed a bird. That would have been the worst possible opening to the video. To inaugurate our impending expedition, we battle our way through the crowds to the giant urn spewing out incense smoke in front of the temple to wish ourselves some much needed good fortune for the road ahead. Before your long walk, Pete, you've got to breathe in the smoke. That's so sensation. It reminds me of my dad's old apartment. Oh, God. There it is. Protect me from our long journey today. I feel good. So now we're baptised in the fires of Sensoji, we can uh, <laughs> get the journey underway and more importantly get some food Okay. we haven't had any breakfast yet. <laughs> Look who's back Pete, your friend. Oh, it's my good friend the Hato. Stop killing the birds. We're in a queue right now for what's called Taiwan Big Fried Chicken. Of course I was going to stop to get it. Zero it, surprise. Well he's pretty fucking big as well. It's massive and there's a hundred people eating it around this area. Look at the queue alone for Big Fried Chicken. Thank you. Big fried chicken. <laughs> Already a bite out of this one. Well, you took a bite. You know, chickens are not usually shaped like. Oh, oh. <laughs> He's back for more. <laughs> fucking I'm said, oh, sorry. Oh, <laughs> I feel like, is this his friend or what did I do? What are you say? It's like having five or six family mark fried chicken stuck together. It's very good, but maybe a bit too big. When you order a big fried chicken, you get a big fried chicken in the designated fried chicken eating zone. So because I feel guilty dragging Pete around Tokyo uh, for the rest of the day with his appendix recently removed. Very true. I thought I want to give you a little reward as a thank you. Oh. So every district we go to in Tokyo, I'm going to give you 2,000 yen, about $20 and you can buy whatever you want. Are you serious? A present for your friend, a present for yourself, food, drink, trinkets, you name it, whatever you want. Uh, you're, okay, so anything I want. Anything you want. Every place we go to. Yeah. <laughs> Power over wealth. 2,000 yen. Well, you've got to carry it in the backpack if you do buy something. Oh. 
keen to spend his 2,000 yen pocket money, Pete leads us down Nakamise Street, the crowded 250 meter long approach to the Sensoji Temple. And it soon becomes clear when it comes to spending the money, Pete might need a helpful nudge in the right direction, you know, to buy the correct things. Pete, I'm not going to tell you how to spend your money, yeah. but there's a strawberry on a stick there. Are you suggesting that you no, like no, no. a strawberry You decide, on a stick? it's your money. Ah, I think I've decided I want a strawberry on a stick now. Oh, isn't it? So you've still got a thousand yen left. Yeah. Well, it's only nice of me to, I suppose, share with you my glorious benefactor. All right. Well, to the first of my many presents, kanpai. Oh, go ahead. Enjoy. Ah, uh, something's caught my eye. Might I interest you in a floaty beer keychain? No. We'll be having real beer later. We don't need a keychain. Then my second choice was oh, this thing. Oh, right, right yeah. Yes. <laughs> we can put that on the bag. Oh. It's like uh, when I get to see the beer later, I can make those wooga <laughs> eyes. So I feel like. Oh, yeah, get that. Get that. That's right, what I'm going for. And that's how you spend 2,000 yen in Asakusa. Well, we leave Asakusa 2,000 yen poorer, and I'm not entirely sure it was money well spent. But for a more in-depth video exploring Asakusa over two days, including what to eat and where to stay, be sure to check out my previous visit with Ryotaro, linked below. Now, being in Japan is all well and good, but what happens when you go to your hotel room to get over the jet lag and you can't access all your website services or even Netflix in the way you would back home? And that's where today's sponsor, ExpressVPN, comes in. ExpressVPN is an app that lets you change your online location. Loads of websites and streaming services actually have different content libraries for every country. Netflix in Turkey, for example, has all of the Lord of the Rings films. In Germany, they have my favorite movie, Goodfellas. And here in Japan, they have the best anime selection by far, including weekly episodes of One Piece. It's as simple as opening up ExpressVPN, changing your location to Japan, tapping the button, refreshing, and now you have instant access to 24 seasons of One Piece. Yes, but it's not all about fun. ExpressVPN protects your online security as well by encrypting your traffic. If you ever use public Wi-Fi while traveling around, as I do, anyone can connect to the same Wi-Fi network and potentially steal your information, account logins, passwords. And that is why I always have ExpressVPN on when I'm traveling. It's just not worth taking those risks. Protect yourself online and have fun on Netflix. Go to expressvpn.com forward slash abroad Japan or check it out in the description box below. Find out how you can get three months free. Now back to our long walk across Tokyo. <laughs> Our next stop is Ueno, the gateway to Tokyo. With the fastest train from Narita Airport, the Keisei Skyliner, for many travellers, Ueno is the first port of call when arriving in Tokyo. Home to an abundance of hotels and the beautiful labyrinth that is Ueno Park, the pinnacle of the neighbourhood is the busy market street that runs beneath the tracks of the Yamanote Line. Welcome to Ameyoko Market. Ameyoko-cho, you'll never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. I say that because it's the American marketplace. My kind of people. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> what is going on? A wretched hive of scum <laughs> and villainy. While Yoko means market, the Ame in Ameyoko is said to be a reference to the years after the Second World War, when the streets became a bustling black market for American products. Others claim Ame is a reference to the candy stores that traditionally a popular feature of the market, given Ame is the Japanese word for candy. Either way, today as you make your way through the crowds, you can find everything from fish and spices to clothing and cosmetics. There are bargains to be found on each and every corner. It's completely overwhelming. But thank God Pete has me around to help him choose how to spend his 2,000 yen correctly. All right, Pete, I don't want to tell you how to spend your money, yes. but oh, good again. I know a bar that does whiskey on the street. On the street? whiskey right here, right now. But... Yeah, I guess uh, my heart's telling me I could really go for whiskey on the street if you know a place. I've got 2,000 yen. <laughs> What the heck is that? That, my friend, is a mega highball. For a mega man. <laughs> Bigger than my head. That is insane, Pete. <laughs> it's not as if you're walking across Tokyo today. Yeah, well, it's my 2,000 yen, and <laughs> you won't shame me on how I spend it. Very Kanpai. Oh, Kanpai. <sighs> the mega highball. <laughs> Money well spent on a journey well earned. That doesn't make any sense. It's no. not scripted. 
<laughs> Isn't it incredible? Without any degree of manipulation, once again, Pete has spent 2,000 yen, his own money, and something that I wanted. Not yeah. only a uh, delicious plum wine, but also some very juicy, delicious yakitori thigh skewers. It's chicken thigh. Isn't that great? All of this for almost exactly, a little bit under 2,000 yen. Enjoy my generosity. Mm. Although you are paying for this. No, 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 it's your money. Yeah, it's my money. Your money, your rules. One thing I'll say about Amayoko is, well, Asakus is very sort of touristy and all the shops feel a bit artificial, as though they're catering to tourists. Mm. Here, they actually cater to real, just everyday life, normal people. Yeah. So the shops have an authenticity to them, a grittiness to them, <laughs> that isn't polished, that isn't for tourists. And that is why I think I like this place the most. So we're going to give it our thumbs up, thumbs down system. Three, two, no brainer. one. Absolute yep. thumbs All up. All right, easy, easy up. And before we carry on to Pete's favorite spot, Akihabara, <laughs> Ooh, just yes. down the road, got one little treat for you, one little place. And okay. it's actually just over here, right? The hustle and bustle of the market holds a little secret. I only found out recently. Come and check this out. Okay. So above the main shopping street, right, the craziest, like busiest place in Japan on a Saturday, there's a little temple, a little shrine up here hidden. And uh, it's really quite quaint and peaceful until Pete gets there. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is awesome. I had no, I, I've been on Amiyoko like many, many times. I've never seen this place before. This is the Inoshishi, uh, it's the boar. Uh, that's actually the year I was born, 1983. Let's go, who's with? Okay, no one. Um, <laughs> old man, old man. I know, but this is the last of the cycle of all the different animals. And this one, if you touch it, it gives you like strength, power, and good fortune. If you touch me, you get debt, misfortune, and disappointment. Don't know if this is true, but I heard it from a Japanese friend. Uh, when you throw a coin in that has a hole in the middle, whether it's 5 yen or 50, it's supposed to be better fortune. And since that's my animal, hoping that worked out. So when you come to a shrine in Japan, you can leave your wishes on a bit of wood and hang it up. And some people have written like a whole essay about how they would really want like a PhD. And then someone's just written, I wish a happy life with my significant other just the sort of level of depth people go into, but it's nice. We would write one, but we've got to get a move on to Akihabara, electric town. So Ueno and Akihabara are actually pretty close, but there's like nothing in the middle. It's just <laughs> like these really grimy, boring, sort no. of office streets of nothingness. So I like this. You like it? This is actually one of my favorite parts of living in Tokyo. Why? Because in America, right, you must drive everywhere unless uh, you live in like New York or Santa Monica. Right. So like just the fact that I can go from like the busiest part of Ueno and then walk to Akihabara, another mm, favorite spot. Fair enough. It's great. Full of whiskey and strawberries, we're now four hours into our journey across Tokyo, arriving in Akihabara Electric Town, the colorful capital of Japanese pop culture. And as a self-professed otaku, Pete feels right at home as we make our way downtown. It's got everything you need. Video games, game centers, burgers, ramen, done. Also made cafes if you're into that. I know you are, you but are. I'm not, I am not. You're not tempted to go in? I think I'm tempted to apply. <laughs> Who wouldn't want to spend a, a pita pancake with me, dressed as a maid? I feel like I've got an opportunity here. So guys, we're in Akihabara. We're a little bit behind schedule. Oh. Five kilometers in. Some people are slacking a little are bit. Are you kidding me? Not carrying their weight. I'm carrying your equipment. No, no, no. no. Uh. Pick up the pace a little bit more, Pete. But you do have 2,000 yen. And I know a great little taco restaurant. Oh, really? Good, because I don't give a shit. Because listen, we're in Akihabara. I'm buying some video game goods. We got your strawberries. We got your stupid shit. This is on me. <laughs> I want my stuff. What do you want then? I want some lame ass toy from King of Fighters. You don't even know what that is, but I'm getting it and it's for me. We are going to Super Potato, the most famous retro game store in Japan, and I'm going to buy something for me. Video games? All right. Something charming about seeing all these old adverts from when I was a kid. It's awesome. So Super Potato is like one of the coolest retro game stores in Tokyo. It's pricey because the condition of the stuff is pretty damn good actually, but you got to pay big. But oh, yeah. 2,000 yen, what can you get, Pete? Maybe I can get a tiny slime keychain. I'm a little, I, I got bulgy, but I'm looking for something, something memorable, something that I like. Something a bit more iconic than a boring keychain. Come on, about? we could do better. This is, this is we could do better. I found the perfect gift. There's only one problem. <laughs> 
not for sale. Mario underwear, not for sale. I found him. Mr. Mime. The worst Pokemon ever oh made. Oh my god, what's he called? Mr. Mime. Why does he say bad? Well, I hate him because when I play Pokemon, everyone says that we look the same, and I <laughs> king hate it. I, I hate see it. a resemblance. I hate you. I hate all yeah. of you. <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> you look like you've stolen it. Well, I got the receipt. Don't worry about it. Paid in full. We pay in full. That's right. Bariado. Bariado. Ego de Mr. Mime. Bariado. Mr. Mime. Mr. Mime. Bariado. Bariado. So we're here in Akihabara at the iconic crossing and the Sega building is gone. Gone. Absolute disgrace. Replaced by Gigo, Gigo, bullshit. Get in the gaming oasis. Get in the gaming oasis. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It sucks to see such an iconic building go. It does. It, it does. It, it's, it's strange how like you care that much about like a brand logo, but seeing but, Sega there, it's there's a nostalgic connection to like the 80s, the 90s. When Japan was leading the technological front and mm. now it's Gigo. Guy go. Guy go. Tokyo often feels like several cities wrapped into one, not just because of its endless scale, but the jarring transition between neighborhoods. If Asakusa harks back to the Edo era Japan and Ueno's Ameyoko market maintains a gritty post war era vibe, the area surrounding Tokyo Station feels like modern day Tokyo, full of monolithic skyscrapers dominated by corporate Japan. Given it's just several blocks away from the colourful chaos of Akihabara, the quiet streets feel almost sterile and characterless in comparison. But the area is dominated by Tokyo Station, the busiest station in all of Japan by train traffic, with 4,000 trains arriving and departing daily, and 5,000 commuters passing through it every single day. Packed bullet trains bound for Osaka and Hokkaido leave here every hour, making the disorientating interior feel more akin to an airport at times. I can't believe we made it all the way to Tokyo Station. All the way from Asakusa. I can't feel my back, all this walking. Thank God I haven't got that backpack on. Oh, that finished me <laughs> off. Odds are though, if you're coming to Tokyo, you will pass through Tokyo Station at some point, And it is chaos, like beyond compare inside it. And every time I come to Tokyo from Sendai, I come here. So if you ever run into me in Tokyo, odds are I'd probably be somewhere around here. My only criticism is, and I've said this in a previous video, Japanese modern architecture is a little bit unoriginal. I mean, look at Tokyo Station. There's like six or seven skyscrapers surrounding it, towering over it. They're all very bland, unoriginal and uninspiring. It's a bit of a shame. And it's really hard trying to talk seriously when I've got Mr. Fucking Mime staring <laughs> at me over the camera. I'm sorry. Oh my God. I love the way as today goes on, you're just getting drowned in more and more objects. Here. Yeah, right. it's, it's kind of unsettling. I think my favorite was the mega highball. <laughs> actually, my it's favorite. All from it's all downhill from there. Favorite thing actually, right there. Tokyo Station, built over a hundred years ago. And I bet you thought I didn't know that, did you? Well, surprise, I was a Japanese history minor wow. in college. What else could you tell us about Japanese history? Well, I can tell you that it took about a million bricks to build this thing. And it was that rare time where they were really influenced by the Western culture. So I think the architecture especially is, I don't know what it is, but it, it obviously reminds me of the West, but it has that Japanese aesthetic to it. I really love this, this station. And also, it's our midway point. That's today. it? Midway. Oh, no. We're not done. Come on. Well, we're now seven hours into our journey, and as the winter sun starts to set early and billboard lights begin to flicker on across the city, we find ourselves heading into Shimbashi, a business district dominated by high-rise towers, and once home to my favorite building in all of Tokyo, tragically recently dismantled forever. Bugger. We made it to Shimbashi, but there's a hole in my heart left where the Nakagin capsule tower was. Just one year ago, I was stood here in front of one of my favorite buildings in Tokyo, in Japan, and now it's gone. And in fact, the last video I did with Pete was us coming here to watch it being demolished, like capsule by capsule. Now it's gone, and soon there'll be just a bland, generic, boring building there. I don't want to come to Shimbashi ever again, just bitter memories. I think I know where I want to spend my money. In honor of Nakagin Tower, I think we should get a beer and reminisce about the good times. You good? Oh yeah. Let's go. This way. If you're into photography, Shimashi is such a good like nighttime spot. I used to come here a lot to do photos with friends and there's so many lights, so much chaos. There's the trains running, there's the tall buildings that sort of 
it's a really intense place and uh, yeah, nighttime photography, perfect. It sounds so cheesy to say this, I hate to admit it, but like, what I like about living in Tokyo and what I like about living in Japan is that every station has its own kind of identity. Uh, it sounds so dumb, but you'll always find something new when you're going to a station for the first time. And Shinbashi, i never been to before other than really? like, yeah, maybe like a business, some meeting or lunch, but never at night, it's pretty sick. I'm enjoying it. Given all the offices in Shinbashi, the alleyways in between are a hive of activity in the evenings after work as salarymen stuff their faces and drown their sorrows. And after spotting some empty seats nestled within, Pete and I joined them for a well-earned meal. What better way to celebrate the demise of Nakagin Tower than to uh, ruin our diet with some <laughs> fried potato, Caesar salad, fried chicken, and of course, the lemon sour, yeah. a common drink in Japan. You got the apple sour, kanpai. What do you Tanaka think about again. the sour drinks? Awful. Tanakagin. Tanakagin. <laughs> It's pretty cool, we're down the most cyberpunk looking alleyway I've seen in Japan. I've never eaten anywhere around this area. It's so bustling, even though it's like December, it's pretty cold outside. It's a really good atmosphere, really good vibe. I don't know about you, but I feel destroyed. We've been walking, it's five o'clock now, and we've been walking since nine, so eight hours of walking. You guys might be thinking, well, it doesn't look like you've walked that much on camera. But all the walking in between, we haven't really filmed it that much because it's pretty boring, right? It's just us walking along, doing nothing. It's been tough. We've probably got three or four hours left ahead of us all the way to Shibuya, but after the Caesar salad and french fries, we'll be ready to go and re-energize. Our Caesar salad and french fries, the traditional cuisine of Japan, a fine meal indeed. So we finish up and trade the neon-lit streets of Shinmashi for this strikingly lit Tokyo Tower in neighboring Shiba Park. Pop quiz viewers, which tower is the best? Tokyo, Skytree, or we go on Eiffel? Good job. Tokyo Tower's the number one. Best lighting, best construction, and honestly, it's badass when you see it in person. You don't agree with me? Take it up with Mr. Mime. Tokyo Tower, one of the few buildings in Tokyo that looks better at night than it does during the day. Look at that, what a beauty. I can't believe we made it here. We've come all the way here from Asakusa. <laughs> and we still got like 10 kilometers to go! <laughs> oh, oh no, he's here. The reason why I moved here, bro. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look at that. It's, it's Look at that. While we're here at Tokyo Town, oh, we've met shit. some uh, yo, right yo. nice viewers. Yo, dude, yeah. he's lit, dude. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, in the photo. <laughs> Yeah, get the Twitch streamer. Yeah, we got the other guy. Yeah. Oh, shit, my bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, man. Of the of the 20 plus people we've uh, run into so far, I've recognized this and stuff. That was the best by far. That was my favorite because you were setting up a shot by ducking down. You had like- Yeah, I was on the floor trying to get a shot of Tokyo Tower's reflection. And one of the guys went to Pete, sorry, do you know Chris Broad? He and goes, he was like, where's Chris Broad? And he was like, he's right here, bro. And he was like, what do you mean? I was like, he was he's like, right here. He's literally on the floor. And then the two guys, they turned around and went, <laughs> hey, hey, what's up? That was good shit. That was hey, good. We got oh. more surprises. Dude, uh, Dude, I watched your videos for ages. Yeah, now you're in the video. Yeah, yeah, yes. Well, that was ridiculous. <laughs> well, we talked about getting spotted, we got spotted again. Yep. It's yeah. cool though, like now that obviously foreign tourists are back, things are livened up a bit in Tokyo. And Tokyo feels like it's connected to the world once again, right? Really, yeah. For the last two years, it's just been disconnected and it's not been fun. So to meet folks from around the world has been really awesome. Tokyo's back in business. That's crazy. So guys, somehow we've made it to Roppongi, one of the nightlife capitals of Japan, and the grittiest place in Tokyo, perhaps. It gets a bad rap, and rightly so in some respects. There's lots of nightclubs and hostess clubs here. It's a very popular place for foreigners as well. Often, if you're a foreigner living in Tokyo, you'll be coming here for something. Even though I made a video talking about Roppongi and Shibuya being kind of a dangerous hotspot for tourists getting scammed, it is a good place. It's a good place for a night out, and there's all sorts of things to eat, drink, do. It's not that bad after all. But what's Pete gonna do with his 2,000 yen? How's he gonna spend it? Is he gonna spend it in a very seedy fashion? Probably, he's Pete. Seedy, how dare you? I'm gonna take my 2,000 yen and I'm gonna spend it at Don Quixote, the greatest store in all of Japan because it's got everything. Food, electronics, clothing, you name it, they've got it. It's my turn. What? An extendable bear hand. You don't want one? Yes, look at that. That is the hand of a bear. <laughs> at what point does someone think, yes, I want an extendable bear hand? I would argue never, but there's eight missing. <laughs> <So>. <laughs>
Somebody's fucking bought them. I kind of like the squeeze gorilla more for disappointment stress. Three colors. Questionable buying decisions made. Pete grabs his purchases as I start to regret giving him 2,000 yen. What is he doing? Oh, dude, listen. It's all about love and peace here in Rapongi, my man. <laughs> Stress? Squeeze on my little gorilla sack. <laughs> peace. <laughs> Look at that, mission accomplished. Squeeze for the stress that you've caused me. Uh, a weird sake flavored Kit Kat. Big surprise, heard these are good. And the real treasure, my extendable <laughs> bear claw. <laughs> and I still saved 500 yen, let's go. Satisfied with his Don Quixote side quest, we head to Rapongi Hills. A glamorous tower with sweeping views over Tokyo, but not before we pass a rather intriguingly branded casino. The uh, blow Rapongi dragon. And it's got written here. <laughs> how to blow a casino. Do you know how to blow Pete? I know how to blow a lot of money at a casino, yeah. but I don't exactly. know. Exactly, that's that's a really weird image. It's like how to lose casino, <laughs> honestly. Some interesting branding choices there, Rapongi. As we stand in the street pondering how to blow casino, we bump into another viewer, Eki, who's enamoured by Pete's dodgy purchases. Oh dear. And uh, what do you think of uh, Pete's stuff that he's bought, Eki? Mate, I can't lie. I gotta go with I gotta go with a Mr. Mime. Yeah. Hey. Hey. But I am loving that jacket. I'm oh, absolutely hey. loving that jacket. That, don't don't feel right. his jacket, that Ego. That was my choice. I that's told you that, boss that, jacket. That's no, right. No, no, that's just, no, no, oh, can you can you buy that, done? mate? Is that is that? Found this at a vintage store. Oh my days. <laughs> oh, there we go. Oh, there we what go. have you done? Good. What have you done, Eki? Wait. Here you go. Handshake on that one. Well, that's thank you very much. much. Absolutely. Lovely that's one. great. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, mate. It was a pleasure. I feel great. This is the best trip ever. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane seeing the Tokyo Tower in the distance. It gives you some idea of just how far we've walked. Mm. And that was not even the starting point. <laughs> It's in the distance over there, right? Yeah, it's you can really see it right far there. away. Yeah. I love that this building is covered in fog. Do you see that? Yeah, it's the tallest building in Tokyo. That's awesome. You're awesome. No, you're awesome. How is the stretch gorilla? <laughs> <laughs> Stop scaring the locals. <laughs> what the fuck? So we're on the home straight now. Shibuya is about two or three kilometers straight ahead down that road. Pretty knackered. I'd like to think with all the walking we've done, all the exercise, we've probably burned a lot of calories. But when you think of the shit show that has been what we've eaten along the way, from big fried chicken to strawberries covered in sugar on a stick, to uh, my most recent purchase, the Kit Kat Sake, my favorite Kit Kats in the world. Have you ever had these, Pete? I've never even seen those. These are just Kit Kats flavored like sake. And I had an addiction to these like when they came out three or four years ago. Oh. All right, so wait, these are sake flavored Kit Kats. Do they have yep. any alcohol in them? Like, you know, the whiskey think, chocolates? You know what? I think they actually had like 0.01% alcohol and like kids couldn't buy them as a result. Wow. That's what I remember when they came out. If you look here, it says alcohol content 0.04%. Wow. And therefore kids can't buy them. I will now take a bite. For, for science, I will try one of these <laughs> Kit Kats. Whenever I eat these right, people go fucking crazy because I don't snap them in half, which you're supposed to do with Kit Kats. It is kind of monstrous. Yeah, but like, look at the size of it. This yeah. is monstrous. You can't split this properly, it just looks a bit stupid. Oh. This looks like a horror film, the way it's lit. Here's chocolate. Wow. That's really good. Yeah. Let the addiction begin. Kit Kat revelations out of the way and our legs battered from walking. We nevertheless continue our last stretch of the journey onwards to Shibuya Crossing. It's the strangest segment of our entire trip, as both Rapongi and Shibuya are incredibly bustling at night, and yet somehow the stretch in between is eerily devoid of signs of life. Save for the endless concrete overpasses. Yes! Here we go. Yeah! <laughs> Shibuya Scramble, one of the busiest intersections on planet Earth and the ending of our journey.
Well done, Pete. We made well it. Well done, my friend. We did it. Yes. We've got some interesting statistics. Number one. Okay. We traveled 25 kilometers. Oh my god. Number two. We did 30,000 steps. Easy. And number three. We burnt off a measly 1,500 calories, which doesn't even cover the big fried chicken and Kit Kats we ate. What? On the way today. So. Well, like, that so, sucks. Yeah. Well, it was fun, and I hadn't uh, I hadn't moved that much in my entire life. So yes. thank you for bringing me. Well done, and well done to all our little characters. Thank you, you to everybody all. who said hello to us. Some of those who were featured in the video. Thank you, Eki. Although I wasn't happy about Eki propping up his ego with his I, jacket. What have you done, Eki? I but, loved it. It was good fun. Well, it's been really fun. Like I highly recommend walking across Tokyo. Don't do the whole thing. The bit between Rapongi and Shibuya, you don't need to do that. But the rest was a lot of fun. <laughs> One more thing to do, right? Yeah, I think it's my turn. I got all these toys, all these 2,000 yen. I'll buy you a drink. Sounds very good indeed. Let's go. Cheers! Cheers! Cheers. The yen. Oh. But it is phenomenally clean, right? That sort of stereotype of Japan being clean. There's nothing really going on. Well, all right. The moment I say that, of course, there's like a piece of a indescript plastic in these places. Okay. Well, Ignore everything I just okay. said. Most very it. clean. Shibuya Crossing. It never stops being intense. I think when you come here, you feel a mixture of emotions. You feel this video is done. Let's finish this. 